The aircraft screen of FS Flying School Pro is where we are able to customize our experience when flying that particular aircraft with FS Flying School Pro in either FSX or uh, Flight Simulator 2004. In previous versions of uh, the, the very much older versions, I should say, of um, Flight Simulator, uh, excuse me, of uh, FS Flying School, um, it was necessary to enter by hand uh, information into the screen to describe uh, the details of the aircraft, but I, I cannot overemphasize the fact that, that this is no longer required. It is not required that the user enter data into this screen in order to be able to fly the aircraft with um, FS Flying School Pro. This is because FS Flying School will automatically look at the aircraft that you're flying when it connects to Flight Simulator. It will pull from the Flight Simulator data as much of the information as it can in order to be able to fill in the kind of values that we're looking at at this screen. And where that information isn't available, it will estimate the values and produce a pretty convincing profile of the aircraft. And you, you can just take off and fly and have fun with the aircraft. No problem whatsoever. If you should subsequently decide that you would like to tweak, that is to say, make minor adjustments to some of this information, then you can. So you're getting the best of both worlds. In most cases, people do not do this. They just fly the aircraft as it is detected um, by FS Flying School Pro. It does a good enough job that uh, you don't have to fiddle with these values. But if you decided that um, you know one particular flap speed was not exactly you know what it says in the manual, or the, you, you, you differ as to what um, the um, landing configuration stall speed is or whatever particular thing it is that um, uh, is uh, needs to be adjusted in your opinion then you can make those adjustments at this screen if you so desire to make such an adjustment um, all that's necessary is that uh, you click on the user specified data indicator here and then you make your adjustments to the values and then if you save the user data here that means that thereafter FS Flying School will, if you fly that aircraft again, be looking at the data that you saved. It won't be looking at its own automatic data. It will be looking at your version of uh, the stats, as it were, for that particular aircraft. There is a price that is paid, however, when you do this, and that is, um, it, it, to many people, it won't make any difference, but um, it does mean that you can then no longer submit scores to our website if it is based on data that you have supplied yourself. And that is of course because um, the idea of the scores is that uh, they're supposed to encourage a certain uh, element of uh, competition amongst pilots that use FS Flying School and of course if uh, if the user has entered their own data into these fields well just about anything could have been put in there and therefore it may not accurately represent uh, the way that the aircraft is supposed to be flown it may be far too generous let's say for example um, and therefore it could result in the pilot having scores that were um, unrealistically high. So you can only submit scores to the uh, high score table on the web if you are using not user specified data but you're using FS Flying School data. FS Flying School data is based on files that are shipped with the program that end in the file extension FSR. If you create your own data the file will end in the extension FSU as in user created. So, you can submit scores uh, to the website as long as the uh, aircraft was being flown with an FS Flying School profile and, and the file name up here would then therefore end in FSR. And there are over a hundred aircraft uh, that have profiles in the uh, product as, as it is shipped. So it's a whole over a hundred different aircraft that you can fly and uh, score with. And we do periodically add to that list. So if you have a favorite aircraft that you wish you could submit scores with, then you can of course create your own profile, 
with the use specified data and then if you email that profile to us we will periodically add that to our master list once we've uh, verified that the data that you've sent to us is uh, reasonable data for that aircraft. So that was all rather technical so uh, moving on what uh, most folks use this screen for then is not to adjust uh, these um, aircraft data that we were just describing and there just uh, for the record then uh, would be this data here which is the um, indicated airspeed category of the data there and then also the flap settings and the flap speeds that's the sort of thing that we were talking about modifying and also this data over here which determines whether or not uh, well the plane has retractable gear etc etc that's what makes up the aircraft's profile the rest of the uh, screen this area down here is concerned with options preferences uh, that we want to customize for uh, our experience when flying this particular aircraft uh, there are just some things that we might want to have and some things we might not want to have for example if we choose to have the instructors the team of instructors monitor our use of lights uh, this makes the uh, the whole experience much more realistic. Uh, the lights should be uh, uh, should be um, used, of course, uh, according to uh, the uh, correct um, uh, methods when uh, when we're flying an aircraft. But it can be a bit of a handful. Um, it's certainly when you're starting out and you're learning all these things and you're even learning where the, the light switches are, if the uh, instructor is um, asking you to you know turn this that on on, on and off and uh, all these different times it can get a bit of a handful so it's entirely up to you you can select which lights the instructor is monitoring and so if you for example let's say I turn off the uh, taxi uh, lights uh, checkbox there then the instructor will not talk to us about how we're using our taxi lights it's as simple as that um, also in some aircraft operating the light switches is uh, op operating specific light switches can be difficult sometimes you'll have a situation where you'd even have to perhaps let's say for example you'd have to leave the 3d cockpit and enter the 2d cockpit just to operate a specific light so if you find that that's in that's spoiling your experience uh, it's it's reducing the immersion level as we like to call it in the simulation then you might choose to turn off that particular light at this uh, the monitoring of that particular light at this uh, dialogue here so that you don't have to keep popping back and forth between the 2d and 3d cockpit in um, uh, in flight simulator so that, that that's the sort of thing that you can do over here uh, then we get into the monitor engines um, section here basically what this means is that the instructor is going to be looking at um, the engines he's going to be monitoring the engines as you can imagine he or she I should say and the main area that we get into here is um, the use of the mixture control um, where when we're flying uh, above uh, certain altitudes the instructor is going to want you to lean the mixture it's going to want you to have mixture to be full rich when you're landing and this sort of thing and so that we can control there it's up to us it's just another another uh, thing that we've got to watch when we're flying um, we can also uh, adjust the sound settings for the particular aircraft um, some aircraft in flight simulator make more noise than others basically and so we can adjust the instructor volume uh, to the best setting that works with that particular aircraft we can also test uh, to see if uh, we, we can hear the instructor properly at that level by clicking that button there and the other thing we have is the ability to disable instructor altitude calls this is something that you may wish to turn on if the aircraft you're flying has its own built-in ground proximity warning system so for example if the aircraft is going to be calling off uh, the above ground level altitude when you are coming into land it's going to be calling off 500 400 300 this sort of thing if it's doing that automatically then you don't really need the instructor to be calling that stuff off at the same time so you may wish to turn this box on and that will mean that the instructor won't talk to you about that sort of thing and that can be very useful to uh, reduce uh, the amount of chatter that's going on when you're getting to a busy time um, such as uh, coming into land um, then we get into the four areas that are for specific aircraft here we have the Boeing 737 the Cessna 172 the Cessna 152 and the Mooney that's the Mooney Bravo and these options become 
um, enabled as we say in Windows these are disabled these, these become enabled when we are flying um, that particular aircraft so at the moment uh, we are connected in FSX to the FSX Boeing 737-800 and therefore these options um, are available. If we were flying a different plane they wouldn't be available and we can see of course that these options are not available because we can only be flying one plane at a time and right now we're flying a Boeing. Um, the options for the uh, the options for the uh, light aircraft here we can see we've just got one option box for each one and that is because um, all the options are controlled by the the uh, single checkbox it's checkbox itself. In the case of the Boeing, um, which is, as one can imagine, is far more complex than the uh, the other three uh, light aircraft, we have whole sections of what the instructor is monitoring and they can be controlled uh, by uh, using the checkboxes here. Um, if we if we turn on these different checkboxes, as we can see he's going to be looking at different aspects of uh, how we're using the um, mode control panel, uh, which some people might think of as the autopilot, um, and also we have the master uh, checkbox there of whether uh, we monitor the uh, uh, the uh, Boeing at all. If, the, if these checkboxes are turned off, what does that mean? What it means is if we turn the checkbox off, it's basically the same same as not having that um, add-on detail pack for that aircraft. Now you might think, well why would I not want to have this extra detail if I'm flying that particular type of aircraft? Well that could be the case if, um, you, f you, if you find that uh, it's just too much to um, take in if the instructor is chattering on about all these particular details of uh, that particular aircraft and perhaps today you just want to have a an easygoing flight and fly around without particular without paying um, too much particular attention to detail maybe you want to do practice some landings and get some scores and submit them to the website but you don't want the instructor talking your ears off about uh, the particular details of that aircraft so you can if you wish turn it off. Otherwise, if it's on, you're going to get the full rich experience of um, the instructor's detailed knowledge of um, those different aircraft. And I think that just about wraps up our uh, description of the aircraft screen of FS Flying School Pro.